Marcus well, County reporting on the uh, 12 dead, 11 dead, 12 dead, 6 injured in uh, Virginia Beach Municipal Center. A guy opens fire on his co-workers. There's a little, there's a little something in there that I want to talk about. A little something, a little something that didn't, didn't add up. A little something that didn't add up. Well, let's just check it out. Let's check out what's going on. So uh, I'll play a couple of videos, too. Six dead, uh, 12 dead, uh, six injured in shooting at Virginia Beach Municipal Center. Look at this guy. Jacked up with blood. They just happened to find him standing on the side of the road all bloodied up. Listen to this. A longtime city employee shot and killed 11 people and injured six others after opening fire late Friday afternoon in the public works building where he worked, police said. The man was then killed by officers after firing at them. Hmm. One officer was shot during the exchange but was saved by his bulletproof vest, police chief uh, James Carvera said during a news conference a couple hours after the incident. This is the most devastating blah, blah, blah. Uh, Friday's rampage is believed to be the worst mass killing in Virginia Beach history. Okay. So here's some of the images. There's just a little something fishy about it. I want to, I want to talk about it. Right. So here's the, let's listen to the, uh, let's listen to the cop. I tell you we have multiple casualties and multiple fatalities. We have 11 deceased victims. They are at the scene. We had six more victims who were transported to area hospitals. I do not have the condition of those victims at this particular time. I can tell you that one of the individuals shot by the suspect is a Virginia Beach police officer, um, and he was saved by his vest. We've established a family assistance center at Princess Anne Middle School. That's at Nemo Parkway and Holland Road for the... At this at this time, we still don't have the name of the the shooter yet. It, it might it, we may just get it. So stand by. The employees who worked in building two, so that they can meet up with their friends and their families. We're also in the process of identifying all of our victims so that we can make personal notification to family members. We do know that shortly after 4 p.m. this afternoon, the suspect entered building two. He's a longtime employee of public utilities. I will not release his name at this time. And he immediately began to indiscriminately fire upon all the victims. Officers entered. Once the call went out, the officers uh, were at headquarters. They responded to building two. They secured as much of the victims as they could, and then they engaged with the suspect. The suspect did shoot a police officer. Officers returned fire. The suspect is deceased. While the scene is secure, we have a long-term investigative process that's un being undertaken right now. There's a lot of work to be done. It's still an active scene. We are being assisted due to the size and scope and intensity of this scene. We're being assisted by the FBI Forensics Unit, DHS Forensics Unit, and the Virginia State Police Forensics Unit. Medical examiner also is on route which is um, protocol for the medical examiner's office. Right now we have a lot of questions. The whys, they will come later. Right now, we have more questions really than we have answers. We're a little more than two hours into this event. And we use the word event, that's a cop term. This devastating incident that happened that none of us want to be here talking about. This devastating incident which is gonna change the lives of a number of families from our city. Hmm. Very interesting, right? So we just got our hands on the. Tr Shut up, Jake. So let's listen to this lady too. This lady is just some eyewitnesses. Put this all on the record, and I'll make a speculation because there was something very interesting that that uh, always seems to happen when one of these things go go down. One of these shooters is always an active shooting active shooting event the next day and suddenly SWAT teams and FBI and DHS, they just appear out of nowhere. Is that just coincidence? Is that just because we're so well protected or is it something else? We heard shooting, but we didn't think it was that close, 
that close, like in proximity of the building. So I just thank God that they were able to alert us in time because if it had been 10 minutes more, we all would have been outside. So that's what I'm grateful for today. I'm just going through a lot of emotion because it's too way too much killing going on. And I'm just glad that they alerted us in enough time so we wouldn't be outside when everything was occurring. So I'm happy about that, but I'm still shaking because it's just entirely too much killing going on. So that, that that's really not that interesting. <laughs> let's see what else we can find. So let's look at some of the images. Uh, it's just cops in the street, the usual, uh, usual suspects. Cops shuffling people around. Cops, more cops. Got the dogs in there, the canines. We already heard him speak. Uh, what was this? I'm just going through a lot of emotion because it's too way too much killing going on the same and I'm just glad that they alerted us in enough time so we wouldn't be outside when everything was occurring so I'm happy about that but I'm uh, we already heard from her so what else do we know 4 p.m. All right, so I think there's another I got another before we play that before here's another witness One day, he's a boy with smelly socks. I gotta watch a cartoon. Just uh, let's let that go. This is a, it's a good it's a good clip of a woman. So, active shooter, municipal building two, multiple injuries. Here she is. About twenty people. Just, the office that we were in probably had about twenty people. Just barricaded, barricaded. Yeah. Were you literally just? I'm assuming hugging one another, holding one another? Yeah, and we had the um, desk barricaded against the door. And what were you hearing? So the desk is barricaded against the door. What are you hearing? We, we heard gunshots. We kept hearing gunshots, and we kept hearing the cops saying, get down, and it was very muffled, but the stairwell was right next to the office, so we we kept hearing like people talking, and, and we heard the canines come up the steps. So at this, oh, stop, stop, stop it, stop it, shh. So at the, at the time of this, uh, we still don't have a name. I'm still waiting for a name. Uh, so let's watch this. This is this is where this is where somebody slips. Watch several uh, yeah, EMS crews back there talking to Drew Langford, uh, who is a, a city spokesperson who was in um, actually not in the building where this happened, but he works in the building. He got word that one of his employees, one of his coworkers, was actually hurt. He saw another uh, injured person being taken out just a little while ago. You see the Kipsville Volunteer Rescue Squad leaving right now. He's unsure. We have gotten reports that the shooter is in yeah. custody, but we don't know that uh, uh, for a, a fact. Um, what Drew has been able to describe is that he saw officers backing out of the building, backing away, but their guns were still drawn, and he saw another person who was injured. So so apparently at, at this time, the this local news, uh, news outlet is getting, they're, they're being told that the shooter is uh, in custody. Well, we found out we, we already know that the, the uh, shooter's dead. But listen, just listen to what she says. We're still working to find out how many victims there are, uh, who this shooter might be. We do know that uh, it's the you know, end of the day, pretty much of the work day down there in Virginia Beach, uh, public utilities, public works. This was the building where those particular departments are housed. Building two, I guess is what he building said. Building two. Drew, are you still there? Okay. Right here, listen. He told us to hold on a little while ago. He was trying to get some information. You could tell that things are very disjointed, very fluid as we try to figure out what's going on here. Um, obviously, a very tense situation. Uh, ironically, there is a uh, shooter drill training, um, yeah. active shooter training drill that was scheduled for tomorrow. Let's go to Robert Boyd. He's our reporter. He's live on the scene. Robert, what can What? An active training shooter drill that was that was scheduled for tomorrow, 
and then cut to another story. Let's listen to it again. As we try to figure out what's going on here, um, obviously a very tense situation. Um, ironically, there is a uh, shooter drill training um, yeah active shooter training drill that was scheduled for tomorrow. Let's go to Robert Boyd. He's our reporter. He's live on the scene. Robert, what can you tell Active shooter training, uh, training drill scheduled for tomorrow. Tell us about this. And then well, we just arrived on scene. We were at the ocean front, and as soon as we heard about this... And then it cuts to nothing. This guy talks about absolutely nothing. But then also on the same... Listen to this lady with bad intentions is every person's worst nightmare. Tomorrow, the release an armed individual with bad intentions is every person's worst nightmare. Tomorrow, the Virginia Beach Police Department is holding a free active shooter training at the Coastal Community Church. And 13 News Now reporter Megan Shin sat down with the officer in charge. Inside the Coastal Community Church on Independence Boulevard. This is a stop the bleed kit right here. It's just coincidence, of course, right? This is just coincidence that there's a active shooter drill right next door. Master Police Officer David Nieves is preparing for an active shooter workshop. It's a free training starting at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Anyone who goes will learn how to prepare in case of an active shooter situation. Nieves says he's taught this class for seven years now. Coworkers, they refer to it as the David Show. <laughs> it's a show full of crowd participation. This is our substitute items that we teach people to throw at the active shooter. And laughs. <laughs> yes, there is a T-Rex in my show. But it's a topic Nieves takes seriously. It's not a funny subject, but we have to really take it, uh, take it to heart, understand that we so an active shooter training program, that was very unusual. I really, I, I, don't, I don't know what to make of that. Let's listen to it again. Very disjointed, very fluid as we try to figure out what's going on here. Um, obviously a very tense situation. Uh, ironically, there is a uh, shooter drill training, um, yeah. active shooter training drill that was scheduled for tomorrow. Let's go to Robert Boyd. He's our reporter. He's live on the scene. Robert, what can you tell us about? So, so the so the reporters actually know they kind of know about this thing, right? So that's the story right now. There's 11 dead. The shooter is dead. They haven't released his name yet. Ironically, there was a, a he was a municipal worker. He seems to have been known, longtime city employee. Right? People knew him. He uh, he the. The people involved are our friends, co-workers, neighbors. Um, he didn't hesitate to shoot. He opened fire immediately. I just walked in and opened fire. Is that, that's what the story is, is right now. I can't find any other testimony. Uh, so let's just, I just want to see. They, they haven't released his name yet. Name is still not out. Uh, so... So, Marcus Conti reporting on the the uh, active shooter drill gone real, gone live. I don't know. I didn't say that, did I? I don't know. It's just it's just curious. It seems to be a lot of these active drills, coincid you know coincidentally. You remember in uh, in that country down below, that same shit happened, right? There was a uh, there was a, a drill, uh, a shooter drill scheduled for the next day or. And, and all of a sudden, you wondered why all these, these well-equipped, well-armed SWAT teams just came out of nowhere. Right? So I don't know, man. Or is it just a kook? A guy just had enough. He just had enough, man. He's just like he's working in a municipality. I know what that's like. And it's just like you're getting screwed. You're getting screwed left, right, and center, and you just come back and finish them off. Right? Is that what happened? Well, we're going to find out. But... Uh, I don't know. The ir irony there, the thing that caught my eye is that there's an active shooter drill the next morning. Marcus Conti reporting.